Yo, what up guys, Magic IQ here, and today I have another build video for you guys. This time, brought to you by the homie Jotty. Now, he is an OG of the channel, he's been here for a while, and he's always commenting under every video, showing a lot of love in the streams, and he's one of my top supporters. He's always there, uh, hitting me up, trying to do special things for the stream. He's a great guy, so I need you guys to go check out his channel immediately. Link down below in the description. All of today's gameplay and screenshots are brought to you by him. Now, he's actually made a list for me to read while the gameplay is playing in the background because the drift events are a little bit longer and it might leak over into the beginning of the build. But without further ado, let's go over some notes Droughty has for you guys on how the drift events possibly might work in this game. I think we're hypothesizing that it's going to be a copy and paste over from the campaign side of things because that would only make sense. But here's what he says. So he said he's been experimenting with the drift physics in this game basically since day one and these builds that tend to put the most points up during the drift runs um, are what he has given me here now I actually have it in a class system so it seems like the drift builds are going to be in a class system as well which I think is a little weird I think the drift class should be unlimited but I think going in a class system may work and he's found basically all the cars for all the classes with like the most torque and able to actually get sideways because if you think about it in B class it might be hard to get some of those cars sideways with you know the little amount of torque and power so he's found a few builds for me that you guys will be seeing over the next few days pouring into after volume 3 releases we will be live the day volume 3 releases the entire day so make sure you guys are there for that stream it's going to be a good one okay and next thing he says there are some obvious things about drifting in this game such as the screw supercharger being a relatively universal option basically the top option in every car he wasn't trying to go for points in any of these runs and the gameplay you're seeing except the a plus run i was trying to show off the angle you can get with the car so don't take this as like a top points run you guys in this gameplay you're seeing it's more or less a you know the angle you can actually get with the car pushing it to its very limit torque and stability is what makes a good drift car as we all know the seven and five speed gearboxes have the best ratios for drifting in manual mode drifting is a lot easier in manual if you are an automatic driver drifting is going to be a struggle for you that's pretty much in every game ever Stuff like steering sensitivity and downforce are all personal preference, so that's going to be up to you guys when you guys see the builds. Of course, when you're trying to fit it into a certain class, that'll be a little bit different, but I would recommend you guys keep the downforce as low as possible because you don't want the car to grip up in any of the lower classes, and that would be my recommendation personally to you. How the drifting works, essentially, there are four main factors. Multiplier, checkpoints, drift distance, combo score, and boosting. The multiplier is increased by the angle of the drift, obviously. Checkpoints have a countdown system that give you more points for reaching them faster. So speed is still going to be something that matters. Speed is still going to carry you through most of these events. So being as fast as possible will be a good thing. Next thing. Drifting is score based based on how long the car slides, so how long you can stay in a drift as well. Not just how short or just how much angle, everything together comboed in any drift event, any game, anywhere. Combo score is a free score, 1500 score added to your counter from chaining together drifts, essentially modging and connecting corners. Boosting gives you points. I don't know why, but it can be used to extend your combo. As you guys saw, he is doing like a tap boost method. That's how he's extending his combo with that one point for some reason. It allows him to chain it to the next drift without even having to drift to keep that speed up and get the points by clearing those checkpoints even faster. S plus class notes is specifically for this RX-7. RX-7 is technically the best drift car in the game stats wise. It's beaten out in the lower classes due to torque issues. This build uses the same engine Koisa's RSR uses. If you guys are familiar with that build, check it out. It's on the channel. It's an amazing build. S plus drifting is all about gas control. If your car shoots out too much and you're hard on the throttle, you're going to go off course. Obviously, without a doubt, these cars have a lot of power, so it's going to be really easy to throw it off the line. It's going to take a lot of practice when this thing comes out to get used to it. Too little kick and the car becomes unresponsive. So you have to find the sweet spot on how to control this vehicle. And the build you guys are looking for is what we're going to get into right now. So stay tuned for Droughty's RX-7 S Plus Class Drift Build. Guys, getting straight into the build here, you're probably wondering why aren't you actually in the game? Well, that's because I haven't unlocked the RX-7 yet. Jody did all this research and tuning by himself, so again, big shout out to him. Make sure to check out his channel down below in the description. He's gifted me these screenshots, and we're going to go over the build together. He is using, as mentioned before, the 2.2 liter inline 4 basic motor out of the RSR from Koisa's tune. Now, this build is putting out 737 horsepower and 1320 newton meters of torque. 
Now 1320 newton meters does convert to 970 foot pounds of torque somewhere around there. Now that's a lot of torque for this car and that's why it's able to drift so well. Now for the parts on this vehicle, we do have all elite parts here as it is an S plus build, but for the forced induction, as mentioned before, we have opted for the elite screw supercharger as well as an elite bottle of nitrous. I believe the brakes are also maxed out, but that's up to you completely. Honestly, if you feel the car's underbiting too much, you can actually take the brakes off to make sure you can actually do that left foot braking technique. I haven't really experimented too much with the drifting myself. He has the brakes elite. I think that's personally an option that you can choose whether you want on or off for yourself entirely. Now for this suspension though, he's running elite on-road suspension and for the tires, he's obviously running elite drift tires here. For the NOS bottle, it is also elite as well, elite clutch, and we're using the seven speed gearbox here as it does have the best gear ratios for this car for drifting. He stayed in fourth about most of the gameplay, so it seemed, so I would suggest you guys do that as well. We're obviously running an elite differential here. Now, as far as the auxiliaries go, I assume you would wanna use obviously drift nitrous um, to get the most possible nitrous, but it doesn't seem like auxiliaries are gonna be too big of a thing here because you're gonna constantly be drifting and constantly building nitrous and the only time you're going to use it is to tap to connect corners so maybe once the game mode comes out and we're able to experiment it with it more um, we'll see a little bit of a change there but as far as I'm concerned the auxiliaries don't really matter as much near miss and drift would be my two options just because you're most likely going to be dodging traffic maybe in some drift events if they decide to add that in I hope to god traffic's not in drift events I don't think they would do that but you never know with these devs nowadays I don't know what they're up to sometimes now for the handling, we do have 100% drift. And as mentioned before, the steering sensitivity and the downforce is all up to your personal preference. If you think the car is being too snappy, you can lower the steering sensitivity or raise it if you think otherwise, if you think it's being lackluster. From my experience with the RX-7 in previous games and just knowing the car's weight to power ratio in this kind of you know circumstance, I would assume you'd wanna probably lower the steering sensitivity so the car is able to feel smoother. And the downforce you want as low as possible because you want the car to slide as much as possible but you might want to maybe leave it a little bit more towards the middle just in case that car does end up turning into just this thing that just slides off the road the mechanics in this game are very funky and i haven't experimented with them too much my personal self because i don't like the drifting mechanics in this need for speed but looks like i'm gonna have to get used to it coming up here soon because we will be having more drift builds coming out here on the channel and we will be having to test that for volume three so i hope to see you guys in that video when it does come out again for the uh uh, you know gas tap or brake tap that's all up to your personal preference i probably assume you'd want to go with gas tap here to keep up as much momentum as possible but you will have to throttle the gas so make sure you're not counter steering when you do that because you might accidentally initiate the car to go back to the right i mean that's just the things we have to deal with here in need for speed in terms of drifting physics so i hope you guys enjoy obviously trash control is off as well i'll see you guys in the next build video it's been magic iq and i'm out later again big shout out to drowdy you killed this one man later